All right, so I'm gonna take you through my upper body workout. Uh, this is, would be a upper lower split where you do, uh, day one would be an upper body workout, day two would be a leg workout, day three off, day four another upper body, day five legs, and then day six and seven uh, take off completely. So you're working out four days a week, hitting every body part twice. Um, it's a great hypertrophy uh, program. Um, so with this workout, we're gonna do an incline, slight incline, uh, barbell bench press, weighted chin-ups or pull-ups, then a uh, then cable flies, then a bent over barbell row, standing uh, overhead press, and a dumbbell lateral raise. Um, this, is a, this is one of my favorite kind of ways to train. On this channel, we have a lot of different workout programs, the upper lower split, the bro split, the uh, push pull legs uh, split. So these are, these are all great ways to train. Um, um, and what I have now is a 12 week program uh, in a, in a you know, template fashion. Um, and followed by an eight-week program. So that would be 20 weeks of training. It's properly uh, periodized, meaning it's properly uh, changed in terms of the repetitions, the volume, and the rest intervals and intensity um, with proper deloads in between so you, you don't overtrain. Um, if you guys want that, I'm gonna link it below. I'm selling the program, the 20-week program, along with a macros plan and how to calculate your calories, whether it's for fat loss, or muscle gain for $14.99. I think that's a great deal. Um, I've been doing this for the last 10 years, and this is pretty much how I train. Those uh, that 20-week program, you can cycle through that all year long with proper deloads and proper rests. Everything's already in there for you. Um, that's pretty much how I'm training. And then, of course, if you want to, whether you're on a fat loss plan or a muscle building plan, that would be a great great way to do it. Obviously, your calories would be different. Your your carb intake and fat intake would be slightly lower if you're on a fat loss plan, and you can increase cardio. Um, if you're on a fat loss plan, but this is a phenomenal way to train when we're going for muscle hypertrophy. We're not power lifters, we're not strength athletes, we're just trying to build, at least I'm trying to build the best uh, physique, you know, without steroids. I always talk about that on my channels. This, this program is, is specifically for natural bodybuilders or anybody who's trying to enhance their physique uh, naturally. So I'm gonna link everything below, guys, if you wanna check it out. Uh, this, is the, this is a great way to train. Um, as always, guys, you can email me at brandonbassfitness at gmail.com if you have any questions. Um, and also leave a comment below if you want to, uh, if you want to add anything, if you had any, uh, have anything to say or any questions, I'll gladly, uh, I'll gladly answer those. But uh, before we get into the workout, I want to show you a proper warm-up um, kind of protocol to follow before each workout. Um, all right, guys, let's get into it. Okay, so a few things before we get into this workout. I do think you need to properly warm up, kind of get your body ready for the uh, workout. So you should perform about a five to 10 minute warm up before each workout, which consists of foam rolling. I definitely believe in foam rolling your quads, your IT bands, your calves, uh, roll on your back, roll on your uh, lats, just kind of open everything up. Also, one thing I want you to do, especially on an upper body day, grab a band, something like this, um, kind of rotate forward and backward, just kind of loosen up your shoulders. This is something I would say do 12 to 15. You only need to do about uh, one or two sets. Another, th another great thing to do is kind of activate your rear delts, a very neglected area. Do pull-aparts. You see a lot of people kind of doing it wrong with their head protruding forward. What I want you to do is just come straight up, keep your chest up, really separate. What this does is just kind of get your, get your shoulders ready, which can be a vulnerable uh, joint, vulnerable muscle during any kind of upper body uh, workout. That's a great way to uh, stretch out your upper body. Another thing to do is just some active stretches. So take a step, pull, pull your leg back, left arm up, pull your left uh, leg back, right arm up. Do about 10 to 15 of those. Another great stretch would be on the ground. Come here, open up. About five or six each side. So then you're kind of ready to jump into the workout. So that means you're warmed up, but I also believe you should be doing a couple of warm up sets of the exercises which we're about to jump into uh, right now. All right, so for our first exercise, we're gonna do the, this is a slight incline bench press. So I think it's important to perform probably one to two warm up sets with this exercise. Then after that, you don't need to warm up your chest again. You don't need to warm up your shoulders. Just jump right into your working sets. Um, but before you really get started, look, it's all about injury prevention. You want to make sure that um, everything is warmed up and properly ready uh, for, the, for the heavier working set. So what I'm going to do is one set of 12 to 15, and then I'm probably, I think I'm ready to go. You can throw in some push-ups if you want to kind of um, make sure that you're, you're properly warmed up. 
but after one set of 12 to 15 with whatever your warm-up weight is, do is each rest interval in this uh, this workout gonna be about two minutes especially for these more kind of compound uh, movements these multi-joint movements like a bench press like an overhead press like a uh, bent over barbell row things like side lateral uh, you know lateral raises you're not gonna really need um, more than I'd say a minute so with these we're gonna rest two minutes and go right into it shoot about four to six four to eight reps and that's gonna be kind of your failure point Okay, so now I'm ready. Gonna jump into my set, about four to eight reps. So with the first two sets on this, and we're gonna do about three to four sets, uh, you know, working sets. Um, the first two sets are not gonna be the complete failure. What I want you to do is take this to about, you know, if you have about two reps left, that's probably the, the sweet spot. That's probably the ideal uh, rep range you should be in. So even if you're at eight or 10, um, and you can get two more, I'd say put a little bit more weight on the bar, and then try to hit that failure point in between four to six or four and eight. Uh, reps, but I think with taking every single set to failure, you're going to run the risk of overtraining. So we're not going to do that. We're going to—I'm going to probably go for about six to eight here, save a couple of uh, reps for my for my very final set where I take it to complete failure. All right, here we go. Let me show you how it's done. Let's say just a little closer than shoulder width. Up right there. All right. I probably had like one left um, but again don't really push it on that first and second set make the last two sets or the final set uh, the set that you take it to complete failure after resting two minutes gonna jump into my third and final set didn't film the second set again it's very much like the first set you know you're in that six to eight range not taking it to failure this one I'm gonna try to take to complete muscular failure you know I would suggest if you're training on your own have a spotter but um, you know, I'm a big proponent of flat dumbbell and incline dumbbell. Today I'm changing up a little bit doing a barbell, which is a little bit more difficult when you don't have a spotter, but I still want you guys to go to failure. If you get caught underneath, you know, I guess it does happen, but um, here we go. I'm going to go six to eight on this one. exercise for chest is going to be done. Now I'm going to go on to a pulling motion. I'm going to start with pull-ups. Um, this way I don't hit chest first and go to back. I like to kind of do a chest, do a back, do a chest, do a back, and then, and then finish the work off with my shoulders. That's just my preference. It's really up to you. If you guys want to start with two back exercises, you could do that, then move on to chest. Um, but again, you can kind of tailor this workout program uh, to your needs. That's kind of the beauty of this, uh, this kind of a workout. Ooh, I got my heart rate up. So, gonna rest for about two to three minutes, then go to pull-ups. All right, so first chest, chest exercise done, flat bench or slightly inclined bench. Um, now we're gonna move on to pull-ups. So, with pull-ups, I don't believe in, you know, a grip this wide, especially with a pull-down or any kind of, any kind of pull-up or pull-down motion. I would say straight up from the shoulders, that's where you need to uh, use it. Anything wider than that is going to put a lot of pressure on your rotator cuff and your shoulder capsule. So we're going to go here. Let me just do, you know, kind of show you how to do it. I want you to get a good, good kind of slow um, 
eccentric motion, the, the way down, really slow and control, and then really kind of power your way up. So, that'll be here. So if you can do weighted, this is gonna be where you're gonna do weighted pull-ups. I'm gonna just put like a 30, 40 uh, pound dumbbell in between my legs. Um, if you're a beginner, you should probably be doing either pull-ups on the you know, assisted machine or just try to build up strength on pull-downs. So that's gonna work the muscles that you need. But um, on this one, I'm gonna do two sets to failure. And then we're gonna move on to um, a cable kind of press for your chest. That's all you're gonna need. Two sets to failure is enough um, to really maximize uh, growth. Here we go. Set number two of the pull-ups. Gonna hold the 30 pound dumbbell in between my legs. Let's see how many I can get. six again rest two three minutes jump right into your last set complete failure uh, then we'll move on to more of a isolation lift for this one the reason why I'm not doing another press which I could go from a barbell press to a you know inclined dumbbell press something like that is because today I'm gonna do standing overhead press so I don't want to do that many presses in one workout um, so we do the bench press cable fly overhead press which I think is a nice balance on your rear on your front delts don't not, don't want to overload that too much so that's kind of what I thought about in the pro programming of this particular workout <sighs> all right rest a little bit more jump right into our last set of pull-ups third and final set of pull-ups gonna jump into uh, going for six you know to eight reps full failure on this one uh, then we're gonna jump into our cable fly exercise next all right here we go are done okay on the onto the cable fly gonna do more like 8 to 10 8 to 12 reps on this one this is more of an isolation uh, movement so on this one there's no need to really do like six reps I mean you'd be kind of it would be kind of uh, useless so we're gonna go more 8 to 10 8 to 12 um, go for the nice contraction really squeeze the chest as you bring it out and get a nice stretch and bring it together here we go 8 to 10 So on this one, because it's a kind of single joint mo uh, movement, I'd say rest a minute, minute and a half max, no more than that, and then jump right into the, the second and third set. And then we'll move on to our final back exercise, the bent over uh, barbell row from the floor. My favorite exercise for your back, the bent over barbell row from the floor. Very similar to like a pendlay row, where it's super, super strict. I'm probably gonna move a little bit more than what a, what a strict pendlay row would look like. Um, but what we're gonna go for, I'm gonna film one set straight on, one, one set from the side so you can see the form. But I'm pretty much gonna be from here, pull up, let it hit the ground, kind of come to a dead stop, then pull straight up, really squeeze your shoulder blades. This one, it's one of my favorites because you can really generate a lot of power uh, with this one. And it just, I think it's a great builder for your back. All right, so let's do one set straight on for six to eight.
<laughs> Six reps, that's all I could get on that. Um, that's what we're going for. So the second and third set, I'm gonna film from uh, the side so you can really see the, the uh, form, see how my torso is, see how my lower back never rounds. That's really key. You never want it to, to round. Kind of keep your ass out, boom. Pull from there, keep your chest up. That's all I could get. I could have tried to, you know, cheat one more out, but then you're really putting yourself at uh, risk for injury. So once the set's done, it's done. So again, with the really compound, really tough taxing exercises, squats, deadlifts, bench press, bent over row, weighted chins, I think two, maybe two and a half minutes. I'd say no more than two and a half minutes. That's enough to really replenish, you know, ATP, and really kind of catch your breath and get going into the next set. Um, two and a half minutes of rest is all you need between sets for your more kind of single single joint movements like a, uh, a cable curl, a uh, you know a pec deck fly or a cable fly, uh, reverse fly, things like that. I'd say one minute, minute and a half max. That's all you need to recover, okay? All right, so I'm done with chest, done with back. Now I'm gonna go on to another really tough compound movement, standing overhead barbell press. And uh, I'm gonna go three sets. Again, I'm already warmed up. I'm ready to just jump right into my three working sets. First two not to failure, uh, the last one to failure. With this one, I ended up taking all three sets to failure because you know I'm always trying to push for a little bit more. Um, and I hit six and I realized, okay, that's it. I can't get another one, but you know, it is what it is. I would just recommend not taking every single set to failure focus on the last either set or two sets and taking those to failure. All right, now on to the standing overhead press. I'm just gonna film one set of this, the standing overhead press. Very, very taxing, very tough exercise. So whatever you're used to lifting on this exercise, I would reduce it by 20% because you're already pretty taxed. Two chest exercises, two um, very, very tough back exercises. So just jump into this one. Uh, again, shooting for that six to eight. Uh, rep range is kind of our heavy day. Um, later on in the week, we're going to do another upper body workout, which will be a little bit lighter. So um, just make sure you guys don't put too much weight on the bar and then try to overhead press. It's going to be very, very tough. Um, so I'm not using that much weight for me. I mean, I've used more. This is just a little bit, uh, I'm a little taxed already, but let's see how this goes. More left in me so I think that'll be the weight the next two sets I'll take the failure um, probably had two left but that's 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 what I want um, for the majority of the exercise for this you know just kind of just ease up right before failure until the very last set all right so now we're gonna go on after I finish these two sets to the standing side race all right so our final exercise of the workout gonna be your dumbbell lateral raise so with this one you're going to Remember, one thing I don't like, that's gonna be really bad for your shoulder if you come in and then kind of turn your pinkies up. That was kind of the old saying when I was, uh, when I first started lifting, all these old old school kind of trainers used to tell me, oh, you know, act like you're pouring out a gallon of water or a gallon of milk when you get to the top. Worst thing you can do for your shoulders, a lot of people feel that kind of grinding uh, when they do that. So. Instead, what I want you to do is just lean forward slightly, just kind of like a little pelvic tilt, and come straight out, just like that. So again, just like on the cable fly, this is more of a kind of single joint isolation lift. You're gonna go more for eight to 10, eight to 12, as opposed to six to eight.
guys. So there you have it. That's the workout. Again, this is a, a workout from one of my four day splits that I have, um, you know, in a template uh, written out for you guys. If you guys want it, uh, click the link below. Um, I think it's a great deal. Um, these workouts are pretty much, like I said in the beginning, you can cycle through this training for, for years. Um, first, the first um, set of training is 12 weeks, so three months of training properly uh, periodized, change up the rep schemes from time to time, uh, proper deloads. This type of training program is from my um, eight week program that kind of builds on the 12 weeks. You do the 12 week program first, then maybe take a week off of training, then jump into the eight week training, uh, which starts with kind of an upper lower split and then, then the volume amplifies. It goes from four days a week up to six days a week and it's a real tough program but it's one that if your nutrition's on point your supplementation's on point you're going to see results but um, this workout would be called um, this is the upper lower split but it's um, daily undulating periodization instead of instead of linear periodization which kind of goes up in an obvious, obviously linear fashion or reverse linear this is each workout um, i change up the rep scheme and which 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 changes up the intensity changes up the rest interval. So this is more of your kind of heavier uh, day with your bench press, your bent over bar barbell rows, your pull-ups, um, and resting about two minutes. Uh, some days are gonna be moderate, which is gonna be more like eight to 12, uh, which we did on some of these exercises, but you know, you would do eight to 12 on your really compound lifts, on your really tough lifts. Um, and then the metabolic or endurance day would be 15 to 25 reps. Uh, or 15 to 20 reps, um, resting only one minute. Now that's the that's the most kind of that's the most brutal way I've ever trained. It'll make you sick, but I'll tell you, it is something that um, cycling your training that way, you're going to see the best results when it comes to strength, hypertrophy, and endurance. You're gonna you're gonna maximize your type one, your type two muscle fiber. So um, this this kind of concludes today. Like I said in the very beginning, no arm, no direct arm training, and no direct rear delt uh, training. That'll be in the following. Uh, upper body day of this particular week. So the next uh, upper body day would be, this was heavy, so it, it would probably be metabolic or hypertrophy. Um, I need to look at the program, but it would be, so it would be a, be a, be a much, much faster paced workout and you throw in some face pulls, throw in some barbell curls, throw in some tricep push downs, um, and maybe not do a standing overhead press, maybe do um, a front raise or maybe a seated overhead um, uh, dumbbell press or maybe a hammer strength machine press, maybe something slightly less taxing than a standing overhead press. But yeah, this is a great, great way to train guys. Um, you know, I have so many different videos on this channel about the, the push pull legs, the upper lower split, the kind of bro split, but I think this is the best. You know, with the 12 week program, it kind of goes into, uh, goes from a three day workout program into a four day plan, into a five day plan. This one, the eight week plan that I just kind of uh, showed you today goes from an upper lower split for four weeks and then into the six day split um, for, the, uh, for the final four weeks. So it's an incredible plan, one that I'll be following for a long time. I think it's, it, it, it covers all your, all your bases when it comes to mus muscle hypertrophy. Again, we're not, I'm not a strength athlete. I'm not trying to be a power lifter. I'm trying to build as much muscle as possible, maintain a low level of body fat, and um, that's what this program really, really helps you do. Um, as always, email me at brandonbassfitness at gmail.com if you have any questions um, and leave a comment below or if you have anything to add or anything to ask about this question, I'll get back to you as soon as I read it. I'll see you next time, guys.